We're here with Dr. Roxanne at the Venus Project, and thank you guys for coming on the seminar. Uh, we have some questions from the community and some general things to talk about, if you guys are fine with that. Sure. Yeah. All right. How are you guys doing overall? How's Very everything good. going on here? Busy, as usual. <laughs> yeah. And uh, do you want to talk about Jock's health at all? If all how, how are you holding up? How are you feeling, Jock? You want to know? You all right? About to, you're about to be 98 years old. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, so I'm just going to get into the questions. Um, first one we have is specific to values. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, some people are asking about, is there a cohesive list with definitions of values that we should all be working towards? Um, I looked for it. You know, it's not very specifically defined. It is contained in all areas of the Venus Project, whether it be the books, the website, and the videos. Um, but do you have a specific list that you, that you would uh, recommend? Well, I would say that people would be oriented by TV programs that they watch, and that gives them the general orientation. You're talking about a list of values today for people to aspire to. I think that's the question. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Yeah. You cannot do that. Okay. They can only show the video. And if they remember that the people in the films of the future will be children that are trained in this new way of thinking and young people. The older people, you don't need them all trained in this viewpoint because I think less than 1% of the population runs America. So you don't need to convince everybody. They can go on believing whatever they want to believe as long as they have access to the necessities of life. Health care, food, clothing, shelter. All right. Well, you know, the values that people have are dictated by the culture they grow up in to support that culture. Today, it's competitive, competitive being competitive, rugged individual, mm -hmm. you know, you step over people to get what you want, to accumulate money. Step on them. That's right, you step on them. <laughs> step over, just <laughs> to me. But, you know, um, the values of patriotism so they can get you to go fight the wars for the resources that they need. Um, but in, in the future, the values would be quite different because they'd be supporting a resource-based economy. Without the use of money, you don't have competitive. You don't have. You don't push being competitive. You be. You're cooperative. So you you have different types of understanding about how we relate to one another, how we acquire uh, the way we think, how we we acquire our values, who's controlling that, and what benefit is it for. So when you understand that um, you acquire your values and the way you look at the world, or today they call it the way you think about the world, is is through the monetary system to support that system. So if you understand in the future that your, your values would be to support a resource-based economy, it would be quite different. Maybe, maybe we're using the wrong terminology then. Maybe, we're, maybe we're, values isn't the thing because values, the definition of it would be your reflection of your environment, yes. your reaction to your environment. So That's true. it's hard to, you can't just say you, you should have these it, values. That, those values come to you from your environment. It's like, the seven word, word, the seven rules of wisdom. There is no such thing. Mm -hmm. It's you know, it, it, I, that will be good. That will be just. You don't covet your your husband. I mean, your neighbor's wife or something. Okay. You know, you, you don't have those types of rules superimposed upon you. Okay. And those that are oriented to the new city and the new values. In other words. We're not making motion pictures of the average person. We're making motion pictures of people oriented to the new society. I got you. And Otherwise, the, they're not going to know what it is that's different. They will see the difference immediately. Sometimes we do have opportunities with our children and yeah. with uh, people who are interested in learning to yeah. help them to aspire towards values or learn themselves towards a value. That's true. So maybe there's a list of that we can make up. Uh, I know you guys mentioned, you know, understanding that the Earth's resources should be the common heritage of all humans on Earth. Yes. Right? And, well, maybe not even should be. They are. They simply are. 
And yet well, there's... describe it to you. Okay. So you might understand it better. First of all, there is a language that's not subject to interpretation. That's what we must develop first. Now, the way that's done is uh, the way blueprints work. When you draw a blueprint to an object and give that blueprint to any technical organization, they'll turn out the same project, but not interpret it. They will not add to the blueprint anything. They will take that blueprint and that's their guide. So today there is a language that is not subject to interpretation. That's a blueprint. When a contractor looks at a blueprint and he, and he gives you an estimate of what it will cost to do the building, it's based on that blueprint. And he carries that out. Everything in the future will be based on the presentation of a blueprint. That's a universal language where no one can subject anything in their, their own interpretation. Now that's similar to a prescription. When a doctor writes a prescription, if you give it to any author, authentic pharmacist, he will turn out the same product, not his interpretation of what he thinks the doctor means. As long as you have that system, you have danger in the system. So the people that are oriented to the system, meaning that know how to read blueprints, will deal with problems. In other words, the average person will not deal with refrigeration, will not deal with air conditioning or bridge building. That will be done by engineers that specialize in bridge building. But the average person today has nothing to say when it comes to technology. They don't call them on the average person and say, what do you think the air conditioning volume should be? Or what do you think, how do you think it is or to operate? No, that's done by engineers that study groups of people. When you have so many people in the audience, your air conditioning is required to be set at a certain level. That's done by technicians, not the average person. Where does the average person participate? Mainly in the utilization of resources, only. But they do not participate in the design of buildings, arrangement of cities. They do not participate unless they study that subject. So their technical competence is what gives them the right to do certain things. How well you carry out that performance is the only yardstick. Technical competence. Well, if you're talking about values or value-shaped behavior... That's much later in the culture. That does not occur right away. Certainly we are interested in people that have, have certain values already or have certain yeah. uh, methods Absolutely. of how they do things. Otherwise, you can't do it. Right. You can't do it by getting opinions of different people. That's the world we're in right now. That's why right. people have to go to school to become a psychologist, or they have to go to school to become an engineer, mechanical, electrical engineer. They must go to an environment to pick up the procedural systems of each profession. So we don't have professions that are not disclosed in detail. We only have people that can carry out the functions of the Venus Project. We don't have that problem. They're not there because of friendship. They're there because of technical competence. That brings up something interesting. Uh, what about uh, beginning or uh, laying out some framework of procedural systems? They have to take a course in the operation of the Venus Project. They must, otherwise they cannot function. So it'll be very few people that, that really run the Venus Project. When I say run it, I'm talking about technical competence. In other words, even in the, the design of cities, the architect and the engineer work together. And the engineer does the structure, the architect does the design of the building. But there, there is no participation unless you ask people 
How do you like living in that new city? Well, all they can say is, yes, I like it because it's air conditioned and it's comfortable. That's all they want. You don't want anything else from them. You don't want the location of lights unless they're illumination engineers. And they take care of that. So a movie studio is not run by the actors. It's run by a director, a lighting expert. He does the lighting, the sound engineer does the sound. You don't have a bunch of people there sitting around that are not trained or not educated in how the system works. So we don't have that problem. We don't have people making recommendations that are not qualified. Gotcha. So, uh, Is it a democracy? What do you mean by democracy? You mean that everybody puts their two cents in? That wouldn't work. A democratic system will not work in the production of a motion picture. A democratic system will not work in the building of a bridge. Engineers have to know what the weight of the traffic is going over, how much equipment is set aside to build that bridge. In other words, do we have the material resources? After we have the resources, allocated to the building of the bridge, the bridge engineers take over from that point. Well, where does the public participate? I ask you the same question today. In the Bureau of Naval Operations, there are naval men that participate. In the Bureau, uh, or you call the Pentagon, there are people that study invasion techniques, how to block it, how to take care of problems, you don't have the average American in there. In fact, you don't have the average American any place. The average American is not trained in any specific area. But the system is run by competent people. People competent in the system, the new system. Now, unless you want to know some answers about the new system. Well, actually, that's one of them. Um... How do you see the transition economic sense? Oh, wait, one second. Uh, I see the transition going very smoothly if it's uh, run by technicians. Right. It's highly <laughs> unlikely, I would imagine. We're, we're very limited on our own resources right now. Uh, you here at the Venus Project have four people. You do have many, many connections throughout the world. Uh, but you can't what, run it unless you have technicians. Yeah. How do, how do we find those technicians? How do we attract you them? You find them. You make them. You make them. You educate them to the routine and procedures of the Venus Project. Well, then that would be a public person who eventually becomes educated to become a technician. Yes. So there is value in public people going through uh, oh, these yeah, processes. Going to school, learning yeah. how to become a participant. Of course. Alrighty. And so the, the, the same thing comes about with just by the root cause, the root of every question, the root answer of every question is education. Yes. <laughs> that was everything we talked about. All right. Uh, this person says something very similar. How, how do you see values and cultural change inside an RBE? And how will values change and be influenced by the gradual change to an access world? Well, the younger people are trained in the operation of the Venus Project. If they choose some particular time training, they can do that. They're free to become involved in any field, taking care of the old people, uh, medical advisors, nutritional advisors, they're all trained. But you don't have non-trained people in any position of the procedural systems. I think this one also turns into uh, changing from ownership and property into free access to things. Um, yes. And it says, please explain from the psychological point of view how that would uh, yes. be in the RBE. Even the operation of equipment, cranes, physical equipment, you have to be trained in. All right. Now we're, we're focused more on... Uh, and behavior. How, how behavior will change when you have free access to things instead of today's ownership and property and Private, private, privatization of things. <laughs> well, today's ownership of property, you have to pay for the maintenance of that property. In the future, 
There'd be people that will maintain the equipment, trained to do that, educated to do that, to handle the equipment you're using. And if it isn't working right, you call upon those people, just like today. If your TV set breaks down or your refrigerator, you call upon a refrigeration engineer. You don't call upon a plumber. You call upon a plumber because there's problems in plumbing. So you have access to all the services. Well, you know, growing up in this culture, there's so much stress. You can't do what you want to do most of the time. You don't have access to education. You don't have access to resources. You don't have the money either. Right, that's what I'm talking about. The experts. So, you know, in, in, a, in a society where you have, do have that access, there's a tremendous amount of stress lifted. People would become more educated because they have access to education. The education would be more relevant to the needs of the people. So everybody you meet, you, you like, you know they're improving your standard of living and, and your environment and, and your knowledge most of the time. So it, it would be quite different. They seem, these things seem to be inevitable anyways. Even television programs would show people how to deal with problems. They would be shown people in the old days how they dealt with the problem and how the new system works. And we show that you don't call people names, you don't beat them up, you don't get into fights, you don't get into arguments. You have a procedural system. If you disagree with somebody, you present your disagreements to a technical competent group. And they say, we don't have enough information yet. We have to study it more. Whatever they have to do. Whatever recommendations they make is valid. So they don't always have answers. They have answers in most cases, but not always. And it has to be looked into sometimes. Yeah, many times this is looked upon as having so many answers in so many areas that therefore it has all the answers in every area and that's actually a, a big misconception. Yes. There is no claim by you that this is utopia, this is perfection, everything will be fixed. But much or many, many more things throughout uh, global society will be uh, improved and, and in yes. many cases fixed. through the. And it's always changing because it's based on mm -hmm. technology. And when people have free access to education and, and uh, equipment, these types of things, the, the remaining issues will have that much more focus on it and, uh, and, and mental power put into it that uh, it will have more. Today they have machines that measure the wear of ball bearings. And they order ball bearings well in advance of the wear. Uh, machines can do that. Machines can do most things that people can. Machines do not feel, and to give them feeling would not serve the purpose in mass production. What you want machines to do is turn out products that are very well made and long lasting. But you don't want machines to feel good about how many products they turn out, or how many products they didn't turn out, or what they feel is wrong. We don't want to give machines feelings, just the ability to produce goods and services. We don't give them the right to vote or act upon anything they can't make decisions on. Well, that would go for people too. The idea of being having pride in what you do, understanding that what you do comes from other people's help yes. and, and the environment that enables you to do certain things. Yes, the education that you have. If you're not able to do that, you have to relook at the environment. You don't it's, work at it. It's yeah. not, if it's not enabling people to cooperate. In the beginning more. of the organizing of a resource-based economy, you train people in the professions that are needed by a resource-based economy. Mm -hmm. There's no salesman, there's no advertising, no commercialism. And you say, well, how can you operate without that? It's a different system we're trying to install. The reason we're trying to install this new system is to prevent war, deprivation, starvation, hunger, antagonism, disputes, linguistic disputes, and most people are not trained in that area. So it's very hard for me to describe, depend on the situation. If you bring a 
particular situation, they can tell you how it's handled. If you would like to help out the show, donate via PayPal on the main website. Head to thevenusproject.com, click Donate, TVP Education, click on PayPal, and enter your information. Thank you for your support.